Okay. It's a cute one, huh? HD, little tiny whoop. It is an HD whoop. We call it the Digi Whoop. So this is Ron from OAS Hobby, AKA Mr. OAS himself, the creator behind the DigiWoop. So what were you thinking with this thing? There wasn't a digital product that we could do both indoors and outdoors and have a good, fun flight experience with both of them. Really, it's the solution for a digital product that can go indoors and outdoors. One reason I never liked switching to the DJI Digital FPV system was because the size of the air unit was too big to fit in just every ordinary size quad. I wanted to fly HD on something really small so I could fly through trees, so I could mm. fly through tight gaps. Now with the K Vista, we have that HD capabilities, and yes. now essentially you've taken that platform and put it on a smaller size drone with ducks that can fly well outdoors but can also fly indoors. I think it's the perfect solution yeah. for what we're going for. All right, let's fly. Oh man, I'm not used to flying three cell. <laughs> what do you think, power wise? I think the power is good, I think it's just a little heavy. The Vista adds a lot of, a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. Like I'm flying it at mostly full power, but I'm knocking into everything and I'm <laughs> taking back off. So that's nice. Yeah, I'm a lot, really on the throttle, but it's got good power. Ooh, that was a nice little gap. I do like these tiny drones because you can really just fly them with confidence around. I feel like you're starting to get used to carrying the weight a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I am. It just takes some getting used it to. It seemed like you were at first just trying to fly at like you would your five inch. This is really fun. It's like flying through all the gaps. Just lower speed. Yeah, like I'm not saying I'm going slow either. It's just like you couldn't do this. This with a is five so inch cool. Quad. Problem with the five inch quads, you could do this, but one little extra blip of the throttle. And I don't know. I, you, I don't know that you could fit through some of these. Oh holes. yeah, some of these gaps you're definitely not fitting what? through with the this five. This is awesome. And even if you oh. hit stuff, you're still good. Dude, go over to the building. My battery's done. Oh, you, you are done. So, oh, seven point. Yep, yep. So, only seven. downside I can really see to this quad is the flight time wasn't really that good. I probably flew around for a minute and a half, actually airtime. Um, I was ripping it for probably the first 30 seconds. The power itself is really good because you're flying with more power, it also drops the voltage while you're flying. So it just kind of makes it feel a little unresponsive. But when you're just cruising around in the trees and everything like that, it's a lot of fun. There was no way I was gonna do that with a five inch quad. I want to get a shot at this thing. I really like that you can get to the bind button without a special tool because normally when we're sharing a drone like this, having to get out that little poker tool makes switching the goggles that it's linked to kind of annoying. So that I can just quickly link this to my goggles. I'm happy with that. Just a very different flying experience. I'm kind of having to like hold myself back from doing what I'd normally do, which is like bigger, more swoopy thingies, and just like get really in this tight area and just enjoy cruising. These are the perfect trees for this. Oh yeah, you gotta yeah. get on the throttle be earlier. Because it's got some weight to it, so it has power, but with that weight, oof, that's cool. That's a little sketchy. You feel the I'm, weight more when you're dropping? Yeah, when, when you, you drop, drop, you gotta get on the power a lot earlier. But this building, this is pretty tight. Look at these little holes here. See, I wanna try and dive one of them, but I don't know if I have the power to pull out, so. There you go. That was pretty good. That was a good one. It's stable upside down, that's nice. It just, the weight, so it's got weight, but at least it does have a really nice, really nice float to it. And as long as you get on the throttle early yep. enough, it's really not a problem. Only downside I'm really seeing so far is that the flight time is not really there. Well, you could you could get a larger battery. Yeah, but then, but you then just you weigh get more, more weight. And then you're still up in the throttle more, so you're just, there's a certain point where like, even if you go to a bigger battery, you're not gonna gain flight time, because you just have to use more power to keep it in the air. What do you, what size battery do you normally fly out on, Ron? Uh, 450s, I think. So, so 450, 450, yeah, I've got a 450. You fly 850? 850s. How many you got? A lot. Uh, let go. me see your bigger battery. I just want to see if the weight to power ratio is uh, is affected much by the battery. The C rating is based on the battery size. But you also have to use more power to keep it in the air because it's heavier now. You think this is the sauce, Ron? I think it really depends on your flight style and what you're concerned okay. with, right? So if you're concerned with flight time and you're not trying to you know, pull out of a dive like these guys are doing, then a bigger battery would suffice. If you're more concerned about being able to do cool things, you, I think you can go with a smaller, longer battery. Sounds more powerful. It's, it's got more power, but I do feel the weight. 
So let's see, does it pull out? Oh yeah, it's a little heavy with the, the thick battery. Dude, it's, it's, I'm so not calibrated. That's so weird because I could do it first try on the smaller battery. I remember my first pilot. There we go. Oh, and it pulled out. Mm, yeah. I don't know, Vanny. Right. I might like it better. Okay, so I actually, off the bat, just covering it, I like it better now because I'm... But you do feel the weight. Oh, yeah. But, like, the, you, the power is better. It seems the power is more yeah. consistent. So you have that weight to deal with. But on that smaller battery, every time I gave a throttle, my voltage was sagging big time. And now it's staying more consistently up there in the 12s. Nice, nice. So, I think <gasps> oh no. I was full power, I was full power. We're here, we're here, we're here. We're good. Now there's something you've been doing with the Vista to improve its performance, what's that? Yeah, so there's a feature in device settings called auto temp control. What that does is it basically allows the air unit or whatever unit you're flying to not overheat. So yeah, if the drone is sitting plugged in yeah. like it is here, it's getting, it's, getting it's already really toasty. And the Vista gets really hot. When you've got everything hooked up correctly, when you arm the quad, it should always go to full power. Yeah. So the way auto temp control is supposed to work is that when you are not armed, it reduces right. your power output to help the device um, overheat less. Yep. Sometimes it doesn't always work 100%, especially on the Vista. This is an awesome product, but I've yep. just it just seems like sometimes yep. that auto temperature control doesn't shut off with the disarming. If you guys are having issues with the Vista, whether it's on the DigiWoop or just your own personal use of the Vista, just go turn auto temp control off and just be sure to not leave it plugged in for too long, otherwise you will overheat the unit. It'll burn your fingers. It's it will warm. do that. It also, it will not, you cannot record unless it's armed because it's in low power mode when it's not armed it's in low power mode. Yeah, that's a weird little quirk that's definitely yep. a good deal. okay well on the most recent firmware as of today these are just some quirks that we've noticed when flying the vista as opposed to the full-size air unit directly from dji turn off the auto temperature control and be aware that you might not be able to start recording until the drone is already armed vanny what did you think of freestyling with the digi whoop you know, I enjoyed it, but to be honest with you, I got a little bit bored. I just felt like if I had more power, I could pull off some more tricks. I think I need to do something else with the quad. Like, I need to do more with it. Well, I think your style leans more towards, like, cinematic stuff. Mm -hmm. So I want to know if you can get some micro cinematic footage. Okay. And what better thing than good old drifting? Oh, shoot! <laughs> This is actually a lot of fun. I'm getting more used to like the throttle and the drone itself. It feels like what it would feel like if you scaled it down. So Ron's original spec for the DigiWoop used 1106, 6,000 kV motors. Mm -hmm. For the Rotorite version, we are using our dab motors, which is an 1104, mm -hmm. 7,500 kV. Yes. So you lose a little, maybe low end torque because yes. that motor is smaller. Yes. But you're gonna gain more high RPM. Yes. Which for us, I think we like because we can you know, kind of maintain a higher speed. It's going to give you more agility because yes. the motor's going to be a lot more responsive. The other thing I liked about the 1104 is it lowered the props to be more even mm -hmm. with the ducts. All your other line of quads typically have a higher KV, mm -hmm. you know, motor. So it makes sense for, for the rotor wire version to have that. And it does give you all the responsiveness of the type of flying that you typically do anyway. So that's fantastic, right? But either way, with the OAS spec or the Rotorite spec, mm -hmm. you can fly it with a three cell battery as mm -hmm. we've been doing out here, which mm -hmm. gives you more power when we're in a little bit of open area. But if you're in a, maybe a tighter area or even indoors, like mm -hmm. you originally envisioned this for, you can step this down to 2S, right? Yes, you can step it down to 2S. And uh, Tyler over at their Rotorite, Tyler Crane, he did a fantastic job with the dump. I'm not gonna take credit for the tune because he did it. But what it is, is when you plug in a 2S battery, it automatically recognizes that's a 2S battery and changes your rates, changes your filter settings. And then when you go outside and plug in a 3S, 3S battery, it changes so your cool. rate, changes your filter settings. So there's nothing you have to do. Whatever battery you plug in, the drone knows what you're yes. doing. It'll change it so that the tune is optimized for that lower battery. Yes. And I think we got to find a little indoor area, plug in a 2-cell and see how does it stack up when we're trying to fly even tighter areas. Yeah. This is Cade. This is the Rotoride intern. Am I looking in the right spot? 
<laughs> Hello. No, kid. Have you ever even flown a drone before? Wow. You know, we'll start you on the two cell. Oh see if God. you can see if you can handle it. like more power for sure if I were to buy this swoop I'd probably go for the three cell mm -hmm. but I definitely think the two cell is doable you, well, just, you don't have to change anything you just use either battery that's true so what's nice with the two space. cell is that lower power the lower you know responsiveness I think makes it a lot it's a more good, controllable yeah I mean you were flying through a lot of these tight gaps it was definitely lacking the power so let's see let's step you up let's step you up to 12 volts and see what you can do with that oh big boy 12 volts The three cell experience is, in my opinion, more fun, but that's also because I have more experience despite what this guy says. For someone who is either just getting into the hobby or doesn't have as much space as this wonderful warehouse right here with all the gaps that you could possibly want, uh, it might be better just to bring it down to two cell. I was noticing with two cell, I was kind of right here on the throttle, which there's not a lot of, you don't have a lot of power there, but when you have a smaller environment, you don't need the power. But when you have a bigger-ish environment like this, I was probably around like 50%, and when I needed the power, as you saw with the dive gate and everything, I could just really go wild with it well, without the nice any trouble. With the batteries being so cheap, because these small batteries don't cost a lot yeah. of money. So the nice thing is you can just get the same drone and buy a couple of batteries at both sides, and then depending on what environment, just fly the correct battery. Yeah. Personally, I think I would always just fly three cell. I think I'm with you that yeah. I would rather just get used to the more power and just like learn to control myself mm -hmm. and still be able to fly the smaller gaps. What if I was just starting out? It would probably comes. calm things down a little bit. I'm gonna raise the camera tilt up just a little bit. I'm gonna try and just create a little bit of a racetrack in here and see what I can do with this squad. Circuit. All, all things aside, though, the, I, could, I could get very addicted to this because like <laughs> it's now it's got the feel of like a bigger five-inch quad. But like, and uh, the size of these elements I'm flying through, mm -hmm. I'm flying it around. I'm like, oh, this is like really fun because I can see everything and I saw the lights. I just the timing was not there. Mm -hmm. But like being able to go up through the dive gate and whip yeah. back around and the speed and hear the sound and the feel of it, like mm -hmm. it's really fun to fly. <laughs> it's it, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm gonna come up the track. I'm gonna fly and like uh, get some footage for the episode. And I'm like, oh, give me another battery. Like this is like now I'm like hyped about racing. Like this yeah. is. This is sick. 